Hi, this is Elle again. I'm doing some tutorials on YouTube about studying for USMLE Step 1. Um, today we're going to be talking about hyperlipidemias. I'm going to be starting with hyperlipidemia type 1 and there is five types of hyperlipidemias. Hyperlipidemia type 1 is one of the most commonly tested questions or pathology that you can find on GI. It's I've seen it so many times um, so it's very very important to understand it very thoroughly and very um, minutely and pay attention attention to little details now what is hyperlipidemia hyperlipidemia is pretty much a disorder or some kind of a dysfunction in 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 the process of mobilizing lipids in our body um, and it has many stages and when different stage is affected different types of lipidemia um, is happening to a patient now I'm gonna be starting with some physiology and how exactly it starts from the intestine to 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 the blood and all the processes that happens in the liver and the fats all of that now when we eat any food which has cholesterol or tags or fats they are broken down in our duodenum and and then they're absorbed from the intestine and they're absorbed by the epithelial cells of the intestine so it starts off with the epithelial cells of the intestine. That's where it starts. Now when the epithelial cells of the intestine absorbs these, these, these fats and they're absorbed in the form that is now called tag, they put a label on these tag and this label is called ApoB48 and this label is very very important because and this is where I want to stress that this is the minute details you have to know that whenever you see ApoB48 you're gonna jump to the conclusion that that is called a chylomicron okay so because this is this is like a nameplate this is like a tag a nameplate that is added to that tag material which is kind of floating in the lymph in, in in the lymph nodes before making its transition from the lymph to the blood vessels so at that point when it's floating in the lymph which has been absorbed from the intestine onto the uh, by the epithelial cells onto the lymph they're tagged by ApoB48 and at that point they're called chylomicrons. Now as they go through the blood or as they go through different stages they pick up certain things they lose certain things so for chylomicrons every time we talk about chylomicrons it has to have ApoB48. Now when these chylomicrons now makes its transition to the blood several other things that has been floating around in the blood comes and sits on chylomicrons and that that's when it becomes a chylomicron of the blood so how do we know that it has made the transition from from the from the lacteals onto the blood it's because it has made that transition and the tags that it's going to use are again ApoB48 and there is two more tags that are added to it one is ApoC2 I should write two like that and and ApoB48 now this is also very important um, so at this point this is also called chylomicron But the difference is that before there was no Apo, there was no ApoC2. Now it has ApoC2 and ApoB48, which gives, which tells us 
that yes, this chylomicron is not in the lymph, it's in the blood. Now once it is in the blood, so we have had this very fat rich meal, KFC or something very, 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 very fat rich. Now all these tags, all these chylomicrons are kind of floating around in the blood and usually what happens is, or what should happen is they are going to be picked up by adipose cells or fat, fat cells and they are stored for long-term long use because all this chylomicrons is not going to be used by the body at that very moment. Now fats um, needs, fat, fat cells or adipose tissue needs a certain messenger, a certain key to enter to their cells to, to open their doors to these chylomicrons um, to say yes you are welcome I recognize you and that key or that door or that tag is APOC2. So it's very, very important that our chylomicron has APOC2 to enter fat cells. Now, now we're talking about adipose tissue and it needs APOC2 to enter fat cells. Okay, other than this one, there is something else that it needs. It needs APOC2 for recognition and it also needs LPL or lipoprotein lipase. That's the enzyme it needs and the tag it needs is APOC2 to, to, to allow these chylomicrons to enter the adipose tissue. Once these tags enter the adipose tissue these are these fatty acids you know of the tags combines with glycerol okay it combines with glycerol to form tag again and that's a stored form of tag and and that's where it stays that's how the the whole fat is stored in the fat cells. Now there is, I'm going to stop here because this is not where it all ends, it continues. This process continues and there is other steps of what happens to these tags and what happens to the whole mobilization process. But I want to stop here because I want to talk about the two pathologies which gives rise to hyperlipidemia type 1 and this is very important. Now we have seen that there are two things that we need to enter the adipose tissues and those are APOC2 and, and lipoprotein lipase. If none of these are present, then we are going to have hyperlipidemia type 1 or we're going to have an increased amount of chylomicrons in our body. When we see increased amount of chylomicrons in our body, we know that that is either due to a deficiency or a defect of APOC2 or a defective lipoprotein lipase and that's exactly what hyperlipidemia, hyperlipidemia, excuse me, hyperlipidemia type 1 means and it's one, it's, I think it's the most common hyperlipidemia among all of them so and they are divided into two categories uh, if you go to Wikipedia and if you type hyperlipidemia it has a very nice kind of box where it shows the different um, the two types I'm not going to go there because of copyright issues but you can look it up on Wikipedia and take a look at it yourself and see that both of these problems either it's APOC2 or APOB48, um, sorry, APOC2 deficiency or defect or lipoprotein lipase defect, either one of them is called type 1 hyperlipidemia. And that's where I want to end my discussion on type 1. I'm going to continue with type 2 in my le next lecture. Thank you.